Uh, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it might be, when and where you're watching this. I am Mr. Kennedy. I'm going to be your history instructor for this semester. Uh, we're not going to be able to see each other in person for a couple of weeks because of the pandemic and sickness and everything. So we're going to be starting the semester online. Uh, as a result, I'm going to do this short little video for you and kind of introduce you to the course, what you're going to be expected to do, and um, what the Blackboard course looks like. So I'm going to click here where it says World History 2, since that is our class. And you'll see here it says homepage, announcements, student center, syllabus, calendar, lessons, attendance, my grades, messages, and tutoring. A couple of these will be hidden from you, like instructor resources, collaborate, and discussions. And I'm going to start here where it says syllabus, because that's probably the most important thing between you and I. That's going to be kind of our contract and what you're going to be expected to do. There's a course agreement form that you have to fill out, uh, and you have to agree to all the rules and regulations. Then you're going to have the syllabus. You're going to have this COVID-19 addendum, uh, my contact information, and then a course schedule. Uh, very, very first thing I want to do here is just kind of look at the syllabus and go over a couple of things. I'm not going to go over everything because you can read some of it for yourself. But we are going to meet eventually Tuesdays on the Noonan campus from 1230 to 145. Until then, I'm going to be publishing a lecture video every Tuesday around 3 o'clock that has information for you and goes over the PowerPoints and the lecture and everything else. Uh, there's my name right there. My email address is jason.kennedy at westgatech.edu. Uh, when I'm in the office, I do have an office in Carrollton. It's 306E if you're ever here in Carrollton on our campus. Uh, phone number there is 770-836-6867. Uh, you can always leave me a voicemail. That voicemail is forwarded to my email address or you can just email me. Once everything gets going, I will have some office hours in Noonan. Uh, I'll be in Noonan in uh, or Office B 124, probably around 11 o'clock until 1230. They're not official office hours, but I am there. And then my open door office hours will be from 2 to 330. Or if you want to come up to Carrollton and visit me here in my small little office, I'll be here Wednesdays most of the day, but officially from 10 until 2. Uh, absolute best way to get me, though, is email. I'll answer emails up until about 10 o'clock at night. There is a textbook for this class. Uh, it's available in the West Georgia Tech bookstore. There are also some electronic versions of it available. Um, it is called The Patterns of World History. We're actually using the fourth edition this semester. It just came out. And I think the bookstore's charging like $70, $75 for it. Um, it's one of the more affordable textbooks out there. But unfortunately, I uh, can't get it any less expensive than that. Uh, however, it is a very good textbook. Uh, you'll be able to get a lot of information from it and then, of course, sell it at the end of the semester. A couple of things that I really want to go over. Uh, first is course attendance. You are graded for attendance. When we're not meeting in person because of you know illness or something like that, uh, such as the first three weeks of the semester, you of course can't attend in person. So the way I'm going to do attendance is if you do your weekly lecture or, or uh, quiz or your, your weekly discussion, I'll give you credit for it. Once we transition to in-class face-to-face, then you'll have to actually be in class to receive attendance. Next thing here, it says plagiarism. Plagiarism is a serious offense. Um, I'm just going to summarize this for you. Um, make sure all the work you do is your own. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't copy. Uh, there are ways to find that. <clears throat> we have software that looks it up. And quite frankly, I'm more interested in you doing your own work and giving you credit for your work. Uh, if you, you do lie, cheat, steal, it's a zero on whatever assignment that is. And if you do it multiple times, then I have to turn you into the dean of students. 
Um, you may not be the best writer. You may not like history. Uh, that is okay. I will give you credit for attempting. Um, but whatever you do, make sure it's your own so I can give you credit. Grading is usually pretty scary for people, but I try to make it easy. Uh, there's two tests. There's a midterm exam. There's a final exam. Uh, there are four reflection papers, which are short little opinion papers. You're going to have to review a a historical film where you're going to have to review an online museum website. Activities are daily activities. The SLO essay is a research essay that everybody taking history has to do. And then participation, that's your attendance. So exams, 40%. Those reflection papers, 20%. Museum review, 10%. Daily work, 15% the SLO essay 10% and then participation 5%. Now a little bit more in detail here. The exams, um, they are not cumulative. So the first, first half of the class is the first test. Second half of the class is the second test. For the reflection papers, there are four of them. They are opinion. There are certain articles throughout the semester you're going to have to read and the reflection paper will be your opinion, your thoughts, your ideas on whichever of those assigned readings you choose to reflect on. They're about a page and a half in length. Your first paragraph is just a quick summary of whatever it is that you've chosen to reflect on. The rest of it, I love it, I hate it, I never want to read this again, why did you do this to me, whatever your opinion of it is. Now, a lot of people ask, why do I make my students do this? It's because I want you to be able to synthesize and create your own opinion. I want you to be able to express your opinion because once you get to the real world, once you get a job, you know, you're going to have to do that in real life. And I understand it's hard for some people to do, but this is a very, very good start. For your museum exhibit review, as I said, there is a list of historical films or a list of websites that you can look at. And then I want you to kind of think about what you're looking at from a historical standpoint. Does the museum website make sense? Does it describe what's happening? Do you know what to look at next? Or if you're doing the video, is the movie realistic? Um, do you understand what's happening in the movie? Uh, does the movie follow the real events, how they happened? Activities are your daily activities. That's your discussion questions. That's your quiz questions. That's taking notes during lectures. That's being prepared for class. And then the SLO essay. Uh, I'll talk about this more in February when we finally meet face-to-face, -face, but I want you to see that there is an essay. Uh, you must complete a five to seven page essay that explains the causes of World War I. And I give a list of things there like nationalism, imperialism, alliances that kind of guide you in a way to answer that question. Now, at first glance, you might be saying, wow, five to seven pages, that's a lot. I promise you with this topic, you, you could easily find five to seven pages is not enough. World War I, it's a huge event. There are lots of things that come together at once to cause World War I to happen. And honestly, I think once you start researching that, you'll realize this is a really, really cool topic. Participation, once again, if you attend everything, it's 5% of your grade, it's gonna be 100. Then my extra credit's real easy. Yes, I did say extra credit. Um, if you complete one additional museum review, you get two points on your final grade. So everybody has to do at least one museum review if you do a second one, bonus points. And then at the end of the syllabus here, I've got the course schedule. I've tried to make this pretty easy. First column on the left is the lesson. Then the next column is what chapter of the textbook. The topic, what are we gonna be talking about? Uh, what assignments are due. So for the first week, you have to do the chapter 15 quiz. You have to do a student introduction. And then the due date. So your first week of work will be due on June, July 8th, not July, but January 18th at 11.59 p.m. And as you can see, I've done that for each week. 
there are a couple of weeks just because of the way the semester worked out where we have two sets of things to do. So like lesson four and five will be on the 2nd of February. And that might actually be the first time we get to meet in person. We'll, we'll find out. Um, your reflection papers are in there. Uh, chapter quiz, just a couple of discussions. Midterm exam is going to be on February 23rd. That will most likely be an in-person midterm. Spring break is on the 6th of April. And then final exam is on May 4th. So um, everything you need to know as far as what is due when is in the syllabus here at the end on this course schedule. And that's the exact same thing that's right here, course schedule. So it's all available for you to see in not one, but two different places. Now this COVID-19 syllabus addendum, uh, we may have to sign something when we meet in person. I know we did for the fall semester, but we haven't had any direction on this yet, but it is still in our, our courses. We do still need to tell you about it. Um, you can read the statement for yourself, but I'm just going to paraphrase and tell you what it says. If you feel sick, don't come to class. If you feel sick, the most important thing is to take care of yourself and be healthy. Uh, we don't want you to get anybody else sick. Uh, keep a space. Wear a mask. Even if you don't like one, wear a mask for others. You can take it off when you get out of off campus. Wash your hands. And most importantly, if you suspect that you have COVID-19, if you test positive for COVID-19, let myself know and let our COVID response team know. And there's the email, covid at westgatech.edu. Now, the reason we ask you to do that, it's not so you can be singled out or pointed out or anything like that. It's simply so that we can trace and we know if you're sick, then somebody around you might be sick. Uh, your professor or instructor may need to go get checked out, whatever it might be. All information is confidential. If you tell me that you're sick, I don't tell anybody else. If you email COVID at westgatech.edu, the only people they're going to tell are your instructors, and it's on a need-to-know basis. So once again, if you do feel sick, if you are sick, just stay home, send an email, and we will take care of you, I promise. Okay, I'm going to click where it says lessons and let you take a look at this here. You see these reflection paper drop boxes. Reflection paper number one is due on February 28th. Reflection paper number two on March 22nd. Reflection paper number three on April 4th. Your fourth and final reflection paper on the 26th of April. And there's only going to be one drop box open at a time. That's to try to make it easy for you. And you will just submit your document here whenever you're ready to do it. Um, it is due, of course, by the due date, but I have no problems with you turning in a little bit early. And if you do turn it in a little bit early, then I can grade it and get it done and et cetera, et cetera. Your museum review drop box, it's the same thing. It's due on the 5th of April. The drop box is right here available for you. And you'll see here's your approved museum list and your approved historical film. I don't care if you do the museum website. I don't care if you watch the movie. It's, that, it's up to you. Um, but you have to do at least one museum review. The other thing about the museum review is you can turn it in anytime. You can watch this video, then you can go and say, hmm, I want to go look at the National World War II Museum website, and you can do it right now. Uh, I always tell my students, though, so get it done earlier than you think you need to, because the closer you get to the end of the semester, the more work you have to do, and the more likely you are to forget about this. So go ahead and knock this out in the first week or two, and then you're done with it, and you don't have to worry about it. The SLO drop box will be right here. I'm not too worried about that right now. Once again, we'll talk about the SLO when we get in person in 
February. And then we come to the lessons folders. Each lesson folder is set up basically the same. You've got some of your study guides, what you need to know, the textbook pages you have to read. There is a PowerPoint that's created by the textbook publisher. There is the quiz, and I'm, I know it says three here, but two of these are going to be hidden from you. You only have to do one quiz, so don't worry. Um, there are videos to watch. Um, I like to use the crash course videos. They're very good. They're only 10 minutes or so long, and there's a lot of information in there, and it just goes along with everything that I'm going to share with you in my lectures. Uh, think of it as extra help if you need it. You don't have to watch them, but if you're somebody who struggles or if you're somebody who needs additional information, these crash course videos are excellent. And then you have your student introduction discussion you have to do for your first week. The second week is a little bit different. Uh, primary source readings. There is one document that you'll need to read the second week. And this primary source reading has two different purposes. Number one, there's a discussion question that you'll have to answer based on that primary source document. The other thing though, your primary source readings are what you can use for your reflection papers. Not every week has primary source readings. Most do, but not every single one. Uh, for example, for lesson three, there are two primary source readings. So it just kind of depends on the week, how many of the readings you have to do. Sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three. But each week is going to be, or I should say each lesson is laid out to look exactly the same. Now I know this doesn't do quite as much as an in-person introduction would do and I apologize that we won't be able to meet for the first couple of weeks but please know if you have any questions email me you can call me uh, whatever it is and once we do meet in person if you have any questions just ask I don't mind answering questions whatsoever. Um, I was a student once, I know what it's like, I, so I try to extend what I've learned to others to make things easier for you. All right, now, um, if there's, uh, I know what I was going to say before the phone rang, sorry about that. I'm going to put up the lecture videos and my personally made PowerPoints Tuesdays by 3 p.m. That way you have almost a full seven days to do any work that you need to. But um, I know, once again, your attention span is limited. I don't want to take up any more of your time. But thank you for watching this. I look forward to meeting you guys in person and I uh, hope you enjoy this video at least a little bit. We'll see you soon. Bye.